So I was recently building something in Imba and I had a need to create a pop-up menu. And I immediately thought, oh, there's all these things I have to account for, like clicking outside the menu to dismiss it, pressing escape to dismiss it, handling the case where the uh, menu grows too tall to fit on the screen, uh, the in and out transition if I want some animation for the menu. And all of these things were handled quite nicely by a couple of new Imba features. One is the transition feature, which allows you to animate in and out as something comes in and out of the DOM very easily. And the other is the global tag, which allows you to really easily set up global events, which was great for handling things like the escape key press or clicking outside of the menu. Let me walk you through the techniques that I used to build this menu. And I think you'll learn a few other nice Imba techniques along the way. I've got a tag here with a button and a div that's kind of a placeholder for a menu. I'm gonna add a click handler to the button that's gonna set a show property on and off, basically toggling that value. So I'll add the show property and then I'll add that as a condition around the menu. So the menu will appear if show is true. So now I can click the button and I get my little fake menu that toggles on and off. So let's replace that div.menu with a menu component that I haven't created yet. So I'll add that, a menu tag, and this just has um, a list of items in it. And I'll add some styling for the items. So when I click the button, the menu appears and disappears just like my little placeholder menu did, but now it looks more like a real menu. But it appears and disappears instantly and it would be nicer if there was an animation. So there's a new semi-experimental feature in Imba that allows you to create animations for things that are entering and exiting the DOM really easily. So here's how you do it. I'm gonna add an ease attribute to the self tag for this menu. And once you've done that, you can now make use of these style modifiers called off, in, and out. So if I put at off, then whatever styles I put here will apply when this element is about to come into the DOM or leaving the DOM. And we'll use CSS animations to animate between the properties I specify here and the final state of this element. Now this at off, it's a Imba style modifier. And Imba uses this at syntax for these modifiers, which allow you to do things like um, pseudo classes in CSS. So things like, you know, div colon hover or div colon active. Imba will do div at active or div at hover. And there's custom ones that have been added to Imba like this off property. I recommend reading the Imba docs on these modifiers because they're super powerful, a really cool feature of Imba's styling system. So this is the new modifier to be used with the ease functionality. And so if I say off opacity zero, now when the menu is sort of out of the DOM, it will fade to zero opacity. And just to show you, um, I could add a rotate here and now it rotates in. Or I could add a scale and now it's gonna scale and rotate and fade in. So I'm just putting these crazy ones here as an example to show you how it works. So I'm just gonna set Y negative 10, and that's going to add a subtle little movement, vertical movement to this menu as it appears and disappears. And I want it to actually not slide back up when it leaves the DOM, but continue sliding down. In addition to at off, I'm gonna add at out. And out means the outgoing state. So as it leaves the DOM, it'll move down 10 pixels. But when it comes in, it'll start up 10 pixels. And I'll just demonstrate that at in, um, you can set additional properties that only apply when it comes in. So the fade here applies in both, but rotate applies only when it's coming in and the Y10 only applies when it's going out. And you can also style the nested items within whatever you're dealing with, in this case, this menu. So if I want the items to have an animation of their own separate from the parent container, um, I can say dot item at off color red and that's gonna make it so that whenever those are transitioning out, they're transitioning to red. So the individual menu items are transitioning to red while the container, in this case, is, is scaling and spinning and um, doing all that stuff. But I'm gonna remove all these crazy uh, animations and just leave the opacity and the slight vertical movement. And because these are CSS um, animations, CSS transitions, I can customize the transi transition duration and the transition timing function so I'll make this a little bit faster and use the ease out uh, timing function. So that looks a little nicer. So now my menu has an animation when it comes in and out using Imba's new transition feature. Made that very easy. The next thing I wanna do is make it so that I can dismiss this menu by clicking outside of it when it's active. 
Now, when you want to do something like that, it means you're going to have to set a global event handler because if you want to listen for clicks anywhere, that's not something that's part of your component. It's something that's going to be part of the whole document. So it's a little tricky to add um, a global event handler until recently because Imba now has this global tag that you can put into any of your tags. And it doesn't really matter where you put it because it's a reference to the window. And whatever events I put on this are going to be global events that, you know, for example, adding this click event, it means if I click anywhere, it'll fire this event. And so I'm going to say on the global tag, a click event is going to run this handler, which just calls the emit function. And um, I pass a string dismiss to that. So emit will emit custom events. And I'm going to listen for that event up here in my menu and say show equals false if it gets a dismiss event. So now if I click anywhere in the document, it dismisses the menu. Even if I click inside of the menu, which is not really what I want, I only want to dismiss this if I click outside of the menu. So that makes this a little bit more tricky, right? Because now I'm going to have to check if that click was on the menu and then see if the element that I clicked on was within the menu and not dismiss in that case. But this Imba global tag has a special um, event modifier for checking that the event happened outside of the current element. So all I have to do is write at click dot outside. And now it's going to handle all that for me. And this will only listen for clicks that are outside of this element. This is hugely useful, made this so easy. Now I can click outside the menu, it gets dismissed. If I click inside, I can interact with the menu without worrying about dismissing it. Now I'd also like to be able to use the escape key to dismiss this menu. And it's another one of those things where when you come across this functionality, you're like, oh man, I have to add a global event handler. This is going to be a little bit complicated to set up, but you can do it on the global tag again, very easy. So I'm going to add a new event handler here. This time it'll be key down and the handler for this, I'll just say admit dismiss, same thing. If E dot key equals escape. So if you press the escape key, dismiss the menu. And it's nice that I'm able to fit that entire event handler in line here in one line. You know, in the real world, I might move these into event handler functions and break it up a little bit more. But if you're working fast and thinking through problems, the, the ability to put this into one line, fit it all inside of there, it's very appreciated. Now you may wonder where did this E value come from? So I did emit dismiss and emit is a function provided by Imba that's available globally. But E is the event object for this event. And usually you have to put an anonymous function with value or a parameter for the event object. But Imba actually provides that to these event handlers so that you don't actually have to even write it if you don't want to. All right, so now I can activate the menu and I can press escape to dismiss it, or I can click outside. So I've added all that functionality pretty quickly. All right, and the last thing I wanna do this menu is handle the case where it's very tall. So right now I just have a few items in here, but what I'm gonna do is put a loop um, around this item and I'll say for I in zero to 20. So it'll loop through and create several of these items. Now it's too tall. It goes off the end of the page. That doesn't look very good. You have to actually scroll the page to access these items. So to fix that, I could go up here to my menu CSS, put overflow Y scroll max height, hundred pixels. And now it's only hundred pixels tall and I have to scroll to see the items below, but hundred pixels is not the right height, right? That's too small. But what is the right height? It kind of depends on how tall my browser window is. So I can't pick a number here that's going to be correct. I'm going to need to calculate the correct height. So what I would like to have is for the menu to have a reference to the trigger element, the element that you clicked to activate the menu. And so if I go up here to menu and I pass in trigger equals, now how do I get a reference to that element, the trigger, the button that I pressed to activate the menu to pass it in here? Another really convenient Imba feature is that after any tag, you can put this dollar sign and then a variable name. So I'll just write dollar sign button. And that is now a variable that references that element. And so I can just pass that in to menu as the trigger property. And now this trigger within menu will be a reference to that button. And I can make use of that to calculate the position of the bottom of the button, which um, corresponds to the top of the menu. So I'll remove the CSS um, max height from my CSS declaration there. And I'm going to put it in line on the self tag here, because when you have styles within um, the render function, you can interpolate uh, values into them. So I'm going to use the curly brackets here to put a height value. And so max height is height pixels. 
So height is, it's gonna look for a value called height. And I'm gonna define that as a getter on my menu tag. And that's gonna return, I'll just make it return 100 just to make sure it works. And you can see now that height, it's now using the getter to get the value of 100. But instead of 100, I'm gonna actually do a calculation here. And that calculation will be to get the top of the menu, which is gonna be the trigger dot offset top plus trigger dot offset height. That's gonna give me the bottom of the trigger plus five pixels because I have a five pixel gap between the button and the menu. And so that should correspond to the top of the menu. And now I wanna know the height of the whole window, which would just be window dot inner height. And if I subtract top from height and I'll subtract an additional 10 pixels just to have a little bit of a gap, that should give me the correct height of this menu. And it's the max height. So if it doesn't need to be this tall, it'll just be big enough to accommodate the items within it. Otherwise, it will go down at most to the bottom of the window with that 10 pixel gap, and then you can scroll to see the other items. Okay, so that's really nice, but if I resize the window, it doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. And it's just, this is another one of those cases where you realize like, oh, now I have to account for this. I have to add some resize event, but don't worry, it's gonna be easy to do, again, using the global tag. So within the global tag, I'm gonna add a third event handler. This time it's gonna be a resize event handler and it's just gonna call render, which is this render function. And so every time the browser window is resized, it'll re-render this menu, which will uh, recalculate the height. So now when I resize the window, the menu size changes. But the, the way it changed looked a little bit weird, kind of stuttery and slow. And that's because um, I have this Imba transition feature in use that is adding a CSS transition to the menu for all the properties. And in this case, that includes the max height property. So as the max height changes, it's animated rather than just instantly changing. Looks a little bit weird. So one thing I could do, one way I could fix this is to set a transition property property to just specify the properties that I want to animate, which in this case is opacity and transform, which is how I do the Y. And that'll work nicely. But another, another way I could do this is I could leave the animation and um, maybe I don't want the resize event, you know, it fires very quickly so many times as you're resizing the window, maybe there's a performance cost to that. So maybe I'll leave the animation and set this um, debounce modifier on the resize event. So kind of like how I set the outside modifier for the click, um, this is another Imba modifier. So I can say resize.debounce and that's going to apply debounce to this, which means it will wait until there's been no activity for some set amount of time. I think the default is 500 milliseconds, and then it will fire this event. So it won't fire it repeatedly. It'll wait until it hasn't gotten an event in 500 milliseconds and then fire. Now when I resize, it kind of cuts it off, but if I stop resizing, then it animates to the new position. So you can see if I keep moving around really fast, it doesn't get a chance to fire the event until I've stopped, the events have settled down, and then it just fires once and animates to that new position. So you could do it either way. I just wanted to show off the debounce modifier because it's nice that you just add that one little keyword there and it, and it works really nicely. And you can actually customize the timeout for that debounce 